camp is very entertaining. And they say we'll have some fun if it stops raining. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedian songs. <laughs> Art is dead. Art is dead. The guy in Willie Nelson's band who plays harmonica celebrates Hanukkah. For this list, we'll be ranking the funniest or most endearing original tunes that were written and performed by comics. However, we're excluding straight parody songs. What's your all time favorite comedian song? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Always look on the bright side of life. Monty Python. When you're chewing on life's gristle, don't grumble, give a whistle. This song has been recorded, performed, and released a number of different ways, but Monty Python fans can likely name one particular place where it was done the best. Always look on the right side of life. Yes, we're talking about always look on the bright side of life and it's used in the comedy troupe's legendary Life of Brian. The song pokes fun at the keep calm and carry on reputation of British stoicism, even in the face of the worst imaginable odds. You'll see it's all a show, keep them laughing as you go, just remember that the last laugh is on you. That's why it's so funny to hear it in Monty Python's The Life of Brian, when the titular character is meeting a grim fate. It's honestly a movie moment that we never get tired of watching over and over again. Always look on the right side of life. Come on, up. Number 9. I'll Be the Racist Dragon. Fly to the Concords. Musical comedy can be a difficult genre to stand out in. In the marmalade forest, forest. between the make-believe trees. In a cottage cheese cottage. But New Zealand duo Fly to the Concords manages to do so thanks to a uniquely whimsical musical style. I'll be the racist dragon. While the group has a variety of funny songs, I'll be the racist dragon might be the most hilarious tune they have from their self titled sitcom. Perhaps it's because of the song's almost pastoral English folk style. I thought I killed you yesterday, grumbled Albie quite racistly. No, no, Albie, you didn't kill me with your dragon flames. I crawled to safety. Brett McKenzie plays guitar and sings back up to Jermaine Clement's short and strange tale about a hateful and exiled dragon. They also make lyrics about an outcast boy who's badly harmed by Albie's flaming breath wickedly funny. They just don't like us because... Because we're different to them. A heartfelt exchange and a couple of dragon tears that turn into jelly beans later, and everything is fine somehow. And suddenly, Albie wasn't racist anymore. Number eight, the homecoming queen's got a gun, Julie Brown. If you're a music fan of a certain age, then you'll likely have fond memories of the Dr. Demento radio show, a syndicated series that featured weird and wacky novelty songs. That show assisted in getting a darkly comedic gem by Julie Brown lots of attention, and we're glad it did. She looks so pretty in pink riding a with her tiara on. The Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun is a wicked take on those depressing golden oldies like Leader of the Pack, that always seemed to end in tragedy. Brown's version is steeped in 1980s Valley Girl culture and is hyper violent. The titular homecoming queen goes on a rampage until she meets a violent end. I ran down to Debbie. I had to find out what made her do it. Why did she freak out? Her final words about doing it for Johnny also appear to parody a famous teen delinquent tale, The Outsiders. But we'll never know who Johnny was. Number 7. I'm on a Boat, The Lonely Island featuring T-Pain It was extremely difficult for us to narrow down a favorite jam by The Lonely Island for this list. Free boat ride for three. Now, who should I take? Ultimately, however, we had to go with I'm on a Boat. I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! Everybody look at me because I'm sailing! The premise is so silly yet so simply effective, it's all about that joyous feeling of being out on the open sea. I got my swim trucks 
And my flippin' floppies I'm flippin' burgers You at Kinko Straight flippin' cabbage Poseidon, God of the Sea, gets an excellent name drop. Nautical-themed clothing has also shown some serious love, and T-Pain's famous auto-tune does a lot of heavy lifting. Poseidon, look at me. The approach is also, we're going to say, needlessly aggressive, but that's also part of the charm. It's an agro-tune about heading out on a boat, having a great time, and yelling it all out to the world. Number six, Art is Dead, Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham has achieved a lot of success at just 30 years of age. And you know what? It's all well deserved. Burnham's unique style of musical comedy can be both insanely dark and insanely funny, with Art is Dead being great proof of that sentiment. Have you ever been to a birthday party for children? One of the children won't stop screaming because he's just a little attention attractor when he grows up to be a comic or actor. The song is a savage parody of the creative process. It's also an admission to his audience that performers can be emotionally stunted and hungry for attention. It must be demented to think that I'm worthy of all this attention, of all of this money you worked really hard for. I slept in late while you worked at the drugstore. He sings comparisons to being at a children's birthday party to the tune of an upbeat piano number. But the implications are dark and surprisingly relevatory. Art is dead, so people think you're funny. How do we get those people's money? Bo Burnham is simply brilliant here. But I'm just a kid, I'm just a kid, I'm just a kid. Maybe I'll grow out of it. Number five, pregnant women are smug. Garfunkel and Oates. Pregnant women are smug. Everyone knows it, nobody says it, because they're pregnant. Comedic folk duo Garfunkel and Oates took a hilariously unexpected shot at expecting mothers with this tune. The humor of pregnant women are smug hits on multiple levels. The lyrics have the duo react to common conversations with expecting mothers with hilariously angry and over-the-top responses. So, is it a boy or a girl? Oh, we know, but we're not telling. What are you going to name it? Oh, we know, but we're not telling. Who's the father? Oh, we know, but we're not telling. Also, the actual style of the song is performed with the sort of ethereal femininity that parodies chick rock genre stereotypes. Finally, there's the accompanying music video, which actually ends with Garfunkel and Oates emerging through a prop womb into the world. You gotta see and hear this hilarious song to believe it's real. Pregnant women are smug. Everyone knows it. Nobody says it. Because they're pregnant. Number four, tribute, Tenacious D. There's a cornucopia of musical comedy heavy hitters on Tenacious D's eponymous debut album, but tribute just might be the best. And he said, play the best song in the world or I'll eat your soul. Maybe it's the song's note-perfect take on overtly ambitious, some might say overblown heavy metal epics of the late 70s and 80s. Once every hundred thousand years or so, when the sun does shine and the moon does glow and the grass does grow. Maybe it's the awesome music video that features the Foo Fighters' Dave Grohl guest starring as a demon. Be you angels, and we sit nay. We are but men. Or perhaps it's the fact that Jack Black and Kyle Gass actually play really well together. We're going to go with all of the above, because if there's any song that perfectly distills the comedic essence of Tenacious D down to a single word, it's tribute. Couldn't remember the greatest song in the world. No, no, this is a tribute. Number three, King Tut, Steve Martin and the Toot Uncommons. There's no other way to say it. The success of Steve Martin's hit song, King Tut, was just lightning in a bottle. Now, when he was a young man, he never thought he'd see people stand in line to see the boy king. Here, it's important to note that when the song was released in 1978, the actual exhumed artifacts from King Tut's tomb had been making the museum rounds across the United States. Dancing by the night. This comes up. With ancient Egypt firmly in the public eye, comic legend Steve Martin gathered up the members of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band to form a group called the Toot Uncommons, and a legend was born. 
He gave his life for tourism. The song was released on Martin's iconic comedy album, A Wild and Crazy Guy. But it was its wild performance on Saturday Night Live that made King Tut a timeless piece of comedy history. Number two, the Hanukkah song. Adam Sandler. So uh, I wrote a brand new Hanukkah song for you Jewish kids to sing, and I hope you like it. Speaking of Saturday Night Live, many comedians who've passed through its hallowed halls have tried to break out on a solo career of their own, with varying degrees of success. Adam Sandler became one of the most successful SNL alums out there with the help of a few viral hits. Lunch Ladyland was an early smash from his tenure on the show, but it's the Hanukkah song that just might be Sandler's lasting musical comedy legacy. Put on your yarmulke, here comes Hanukkah, so much funaka to celebrate Hanukkah. The song is played to this day on radio during the holidays. That's not bad for a tune that largely rattles off the names of Jewish celebrities and artists. Paul Newman's half Jewish and Goldie Hawn's half too. Put them together, what a fine looking Jew. From David Lee Roth lighting the menorah to the conversion of Hall of Famer Rod Carew, we love hearing this song every year. Before we name our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Rappin' Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. We give this one tons of respect. My car broke down, I called AAA. No respect, no respect. They left the car and told me away. Take Off, Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas, with guest Getty Lee. Take Off, to the great white north. Take Off, it's a beauty way to go. Prejudice, Tim Minchin. Towing some controversial lines. So listen to me if you care for your health. You won't call me ginger last you ginger yourself, yeah. Dating the Pope, Judy Tenuta. Once you hear Judy's voice, you never forget it. I just want a cowboy with gold-plated soap. Yeah, I just want a cowboy named John Paul the Pope. Ouch, the Ruddles. This Beatles parody never gets old. Ouch, don't desert me. Ouch. Please don't hurt me. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Want more music content? Watch Mojo produces an original podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. The show provides authentic interviews with artists from all around the world while also staying true to Watch Mojo's roots with top 10 music banter thrown into the mix. What's the best advice Alice Cooper's ever given you? Looking back at the staying power, does it shock you? Uh, no, we have naked pictures of the right people. If you want exclusive interviews with award-winning artists, producers, singers, songwriters, check out Inner Sleeve. Number one, asshole, Dennis Leary. It isn't easy for a song with this much vulgar language and bad behavior to survive on the radio. But believe it or not, Dennis Leary's asshole continues to thrive to this day. I'm just a regular Joe with a regular job. I'm your average white suburbanite slob. It's a near-perfect example of the comedian's fiery onstage persona, especially during the time of his No Cure for Cancer album. I drive really slow in the ultra-fast. Although Leary faced industry accusations that part of his act and the idea for this tune were taken from other comics, fans didn't seem to care and the song actually saw success. Maybe they're right when they tell me I'm wrong. While Leary's rants about tossing out styrofoam burger containers out the window didn't exactly age well, the song is an overblown comedic tune that's still beloved today. And when I'm done sucking down those grease ball burgers, I'm gonna wipe my mouth with the American flag, and then I'm gonna toss the styrofoam containers right out the side, and there ain't a goddamn thing anybody can do about it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.